Hello there everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Savu from SAAnatomy.com and today we're going to be working on this ape. So get your reference images and get your drawing pads out and let's get started. So unlike most of our other videos where we would start off by making our own base mesh with really simple geometry or sub tools, today we're going to be working on a mannequin instead. So we're going to pose everything to the pose that we want it to be in and then uh, we're going to edit the mesh so what you can do is uh, after posing it in whatever pose you want it to be in you can hit a and it will allow you to sculpt onto the uh, mannequin itself so because the mannequin that we are working on here the mesh or the body is really skinny it has really uh, thin shapes what we're gonna do now is just inflate it so we're gonna be using our inflate brush you can use other brushes such as your standard brush or even your clay build up sometimes but the thing is with that you're going to be editing the other sides of the mesh so you're just going to be destroying the other side so you'll be adding a lot of volume to one side but the other side will be destroyed um, you can obviously disable this within your brush settings so, you, so you'll just scroll down and you'll find uh, the settings that 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 can help with that but usually you just use inflate because it will move the quads of the mesh along their uh, normals so uh, it will just really fatten uh, the mesh entirely so that's what we're going to be using so in terms of proportions compared to a human the proportions of an ape are uh, you would start to see that the arms are longer so you'd have to uh, focus on that uh, and the legs are a little shorter because they normally use their arms as well to uh, for movement uh, and uh, you just have to keep that in mind so things like the hand for example the the, the entire palm just seems really longer and the the fingers are also longer except for the thumb the thumb seems really short so everything else is just kind of like elongated to help them move uh, really and climb and uh, do uh, you know just just do things in their in their own daily lives in the wild so you just have to keep those things in mind so when working with this certain animal you're gonna feel like a lot of things are really familiar especially if you are used to doing human anatomy so this echo is gonna be really simple it's gonna feel really familiar um, because everything is just kind of the same obviously the differences are the length of the arms and the uh the shape of the feet and uh the size of certain muscles obviously but nearly everything is just of like it's just a carbon copy of uh, what you've already seen thus far especially with mammals or um these kind of bipedal creatures so if you're used to humans then you're gonna find this really really simple and vice versa as well so if you've never done a human and uh, a crochet before a human anatomy once you do this uh, and then you hop into doing a human you're gonna feel like it's it's all the same and all it's just gonna go like that across the entire board so if you're moving from a human and then you want to sculpt a zebra or a cow or whatever because they're all really just the same uh, the placement is just different one thing that is pretty interesting when working on uh, the ape a crochet or like if you're working on a chimpanzee a baboon all all those kind of animals and whatever you really start to notice that uh, these creatures are fairly muscular they're really big um, because of their lifestyles obviously so if you had to compare it to a average human an average person their muscles won't be that profound or they won't be that sick or have much volume it will just be normal um, but if you had to look at this ape for example this would be like an average ape but you could see that its deltoids are really quite thick and its biceps are big enough they're thick and their trapezius is also quite profound so it, it really looks ferocious uh, if you just look at it without the skin you know like if you, an ape had to charge down at you like a gorilla if it had to gorillas are already large enough and if they came just charging towards you just without the flesh and it's just an echo shade it looks much creepier than it would um just normally it'll always look creepy or it'll always look scary but 
that is just one interesting thing that uh, most of these animals because of the way they live their muscles would kind of show that okay they walk on all fours or they're always like climbing trees or something so they are um their muscles would show that so as you can see here you start to notice the sheer size of these uh, muscle groups you start to notice that these guys are actually pretty tough they're actually pretty big they're lean um and it's obviously because of the way that they live like i said before so their lives are obviously the uh, a big have a big part to play in the reason why their their bodies look like that um like chimps for example or, or apes or all kinds of apes they're able to stand up but usually they they use their arms to move like a gorilla it usually uses its arms to move and whatnot so you get to see how muscular the arm is because it's helping it uh, move and balance and whatnot so you really uh, have to make these muscle groups really thick and really buff and and really big uh, as or as adrian would say you got to make them look like bodybuilders i suppose so it's really interesting to see how their lives are, are play a big part in why they look the way they do how they live how they move how they eat their diet and everything so when it comes to the legs what i like to do is just start blocking out all the major parts that i'm going to focus on later so um like right here i did block out mostly everything that i was going to work on so the quadriceps for example um such as the vastus lateralis and uh all the other muscle groups around it like i, I even went in and like blocked out the like the smaller parts the smaller muscles that you would hardly notice sometimes like the adductor longus uh, or the pectineus so i did go in and block out those uh those parts um and by all means you can block out mostly the major parts like the quadriceps and then you can come back later on on the refining stage and then uh, focus on the smaller details and the smaller muscle groups or the muscle groups you would hardly notice so when it came to the feet uh what i normally do you'll always see me do is like i'll put like a flesh pad or like a glove made out of its its own like skin and whatever that sounds very morbid without context but um so i won't go in and like focus on the bones and whatever i will do that in a later stage we'll probably go into those kind of details way later on but right now we're just handling echo shades and normally you'll see that with echo shades um they will just like skip a few steps um because some other parts don't really have a lot of muscles to uh, focus on because mainly with, with i believe with some echo shades you're just trying to focus on the major muscle groups so uh what's really funny is uh i have done an ape model before but like it was for a game asset so what i did was i actually duplicated the hand of the ape and then i placed it on the foot and obviously moved proportions around and you could somewhat do the same thing here but i prefer not to and i advise you not to do that you might as well just start off uh doing it uh, separately just just work on the feet and then work on the arms uh separately so when it came to the head and the um neck and whatnot such as for example the sternocleid domestoid muscle uh, i made that muscle really thick well not that thick but really big um well, obviously most of the muscles here are pretty big such as the trapezius as well um but uh, when it came to the face as well uh, i used a, a normal chimp as a reference but i also like bear in mind like this is supposed to kind of look human like so i gave it i started looking at human features mostly first and then um and then i i went in and tried to compare it to like a uh, an actual chimp or an actual ape so i mainly used human references in my mind i didn't look at anything human i just used something human in my mind i just had that at the back of my head what's pretty interesting is uh, i have said this before that uh, you don't always have to use still images for references you could also look at videos or um you could also go places and and try to figure out how these certain things will work and and how they function and everything like that uh so the same things can be done for anatomy you could uh, look at a um for example if you're working on this ape uh the kind of mindset that you have to have is you have to be thinking about apes all the time now like as you're working on this project you have to be thinking okay how 
would the body move how would uh, it look if if it were charging towards me or something like that uh, and what i did actually uh, probably i wouldn't advise everybody to do this especially if you're in the office or anything like that but what i did was i used uh, a movie as reference as well i uh, started watching planet of the apes and uh, looking at andy circus's work as caesar and it was really interesting and i saw the back uh, the back end production i was looking at the production of the entire movie uh, while well, i was only looking at snippets and it was really interesting to see how they were able to mimic uh, the ape language and or uh, well, the movement uh, not not the language but they were able to mimic so many things and they came really close but they also gave it like some human aspects so you could find reference images everywhere and you don't always have to look at just one thing uh, like you've, you're seeing here that I'm also looking at human anatomy and uh, other animal anatomy to help me understand what's happening. Even, even in the previous video with the ostrich, I also used dinosaur anatomy to try and try and understand the ostrich's um, entire um, physiology as well. So you could find references everywhere you can find reference images everywhere reference videos and everything like that so you're basically studying you're doing an entire deep dive and you're trying to understand how these certain things function and how they work and by all means get up on on all fours and start trying to like mimic an ape and and all that and trying to understand how they would actually live their lives and uh, as silly as it may seem sometimes it is helpful sometimes to just try to understand how these certain things function and with that everything is done really now i was just uh detailing the hand a little bit just to try and sell it a little more just to make it feel a little more interesting and the mouth as well just adding in some rough patches here and there uh, as well on the hand um, because i felt like it, it would feel really weird if it was just a smooth hand and a smooth mouth and and that's all so uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope that this was really informative and you learned something uh, and I will see you in the next one.